Boys, when we're little, we get into all these little different hobbies, and if you're anything like me, these turn into obsessions. So in this video, I figured that I'll share some of my most prominent and longest lasting obsessions that I think kind of define who I am today. Also, uh, I got a special video planned coming out in two days. Uh, if you look at the, the clock, you'll know what memorial I'll be talking about there. So stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe and enjoy. Minecraft. Now, I got into Minecraft from an unspeakable video. If you don't know unspeakable and you don't remember when he was popping on Minecraft, oh, you missed out, man. So I was on my tablet, and I, it wasn't even a tablet. It was like a fucking iPad 4. I vividly remember it was my dad's iPad 4, and I watched uh, Minecraft videos, and I vividly remember I watched this one unspeakable video, and I couldn't... I, I, I don't know how to describe it. I don't think I could describe it, but if I saw it now, I'd be able to recognize it. And I watched this video, and then and in that video somewhere I realized that you could get Minecraft on like a phone or an iPad and so I immediately obviously ran into my fucking parents and I was like buy me this and, it, and you know Minecraft Pocket Edition is like eight dollars and it's dog shit so it took a while for it to convince them and uh, eventually I did and then I got really into Minecraft I started playing it I think one time I thought I was playing survival but I was really playing creative and I uh, fucked that up I always knew that I was like well there's this one version that all the the youtubers play and it's different and I knew it because I would always try to make red redstone doors and the way that redstone works on pocket edition minecraft is different than java and so i was always like well this isn't the same version and so i got an xbox one year it was christmas 2017 and i said i want an xbox and minecraft and they got me every version of minecraft they got me minecraft bedrock edition minecraft story mode and minecraft 360 edition and not 360 it was like xbox one edition but it was basically just 360 edition upgraded and i eventually just started playing the shit out of bedrock edition and probably have a couple thousand hours in that and i always kind of knew it was was ghetto and shitty to play Minecraft on a controller. After about a couple more years of playing that, I eventually got a computer for 2019 Christmas, and literally the first thing that I got on it was Minecraft Java Edition, because it was the first time I could finally play it. After that, I put probably a couple more thousand hours into Minecraft, and I mean, I still play it consistently. So I guess that childhood obsession never really went away. It's not as insane as it used to be. I'm not as into it as I used to be. During the Minecraft phase, there was also another phase there was the Five Nights at Freddy's phase, and I can tell you exactly how I got into this one. So I was watching like Dan TDM videos on my YouTube TV. Eventually, I like lost my remote because I so I couldn't switch the channel. And a Game Theory, a Game Theory FNAF video came on. Might be the most iconic thing the ever, internet's ever created. And it was just some random part in the timeline. I didn't really understand what was going on, but I was like half listening to it, half playing with Legos, and I was like, well, this is fucking sick. And started to watch some Game Theory videos, just all the Game Theory FNAF videos, and I started to watch more FNAF shit, and then that's whenever FNAF, like, really fucking blew up after that, and, like, my school and my, this was first grade. I remember one year for my birthday, I got, like, a $30 Visa gift card, and I downloaded all the FNAF games on my fucking gay-ass tablet. The thing was about the FNAF obsession was that I would, like, watch videos on them, and I knew everything about them. I knew all the characters, but I was always, like, too scared to play the game, so I always knew everything about them. I always watched videos videos on them. I was really into it. I think I had a FNAF themed birthday at one point, but I was always too much of a bitch to play the games. So I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that too. I don't think I've ever beaten one FNAF game and I don't think I will unless I do it for a video at some point. That might actually be a good video. I beat the FNAF games to prove they're not scary. Another obsession that I had, this was Phineas and Ferb. That's probably one of the best cartoons ever made, but for a while there on that same TV that I would watch YouTube on, I would also watch Netflix on. It was like a smart TV and that was back when smart TVs weren't the only TVs ever made, so it was pretty fucking cool. And every night before I'd go to bed in like second and third grade, I'd watch something on Netflix before I went to sleep. Almost every single time, it was Phineas and Ferb, because that was like the only cartoon that was on there. And I mean, you know, you know how fucking children are in, in cartoons. I mean, I still fuck with cartoons, but I probably watched all of Phineas and Ferb six or seven times. I'm not even kidding. It was like a good three year span where almost every single night I was watching Phineas and Ferb episodes that I'd already seen. I'd already seen all of them multiple times. And then after that, the next obsession was the show Jesse. Now this one I got into a little bit differently. I think I was grounded and so I was in the living room and the only way that I could watch anything was watching whatever my sister was watching in the living room and she put on Jesse on Netflix and then I was like, this is fucking cringe. This is gay. It's a freaking girl show. I watched it for like probably three hours. I mean, for a little kid, that's a long ass time. Three hours to watch, to do one thing. And I just sat there on the couch and I 
I kept watching episodes. I like vividly remember the episodes. There was one where fucking Mrs. Kipling was like in the movie theater. Once I got ungrounded, I started watching it on Netflix. And I remember nice. There was some Jesse episodes that would come on and I could recite them. I don't think I could do that now, but I remember there was one where like Luke gets pied in the face for some reason. I literally would be like playing with Legos and I could recite the entire fucking episode without even watching it. Because the thing is too, is whenever I was a little kid, I would always have shows on in the background. I didn't like silence in my room. I didn't have like a computer or anything. Like all the stuff that I would listen to or play or watch would be on speakers. And so I would always want to have something on. And so I'd always put on Jesse or Phineas and Ferb. It was, it was literally the only two, two shows I watched. After the Minecraft obsession, what actually kind of ended the Minecraft obsession for a while, and I bet that this is the case for a lot of people, especially my age, was whenever Fortnite came out. And I, I, there's actually a pretty interesting story with me and Fortnite. Fortnite started popping whenever I was in second grade, which is just insane to say because I'm in my I'm in the first year of high school now. I had seen videos on Fortnite, and I just heard like everybody was getting addicted to it. Everybody really liked it, and I kind of wanted to. I wanted to be good at Fortnite because it was like popular and it was cool and it, and it looked cool and I liked it and shit but I was in second grade and like if you played games when you were that young you don't really fully understand the concept of like gaming yet you're just kind of playing with the screen thingy that moves around and does cool shit and so I'd play Fortnite and I'd play solos and I still can't play solos and it took me a long time to like get addicted to Fortnite like I actually like vividly remember like wanting to get addicted to it like thinking about like wanting to like the game wanting to not want to put it down and it took until I started to play duos with one of my like fucking second grade friends on Xbox to start getting addicted to that shit. That's also what started like the online gaming phase. Like I didn't even have a headset before I started playing Fortnite. I got the, this $15 Turtle Beach headset. Iconic as fuck. I probably went through no joke 10 of those and they just are absolutely dog shit and after a while they just stopped working. Started grinding that and I played all the way up until season 6. The thing is also when you're that young too you don't really have a concept of like volume. Like I'm filming this at 11.30 at night on a Sunday night and I have school tomorrow. If my parents walk in, they're gonna yell at me, so I'm kinda keeping it down right now. I didn't really have a concept of that whenever I was playing Fortnite, whenever I was eight years old with the headset on for the first time, and so I would be screaming at the top of my fucking lungs, and my parents hated that shit, because I have thin walls too. I remember one time in third grade, I did something, my punishment for whatever I did in third grade was I got banned from Fortnite. My parents didn't let me play Fortnite, and then from about the middle of season six to Chapter 2 Season 4. Man, I sound like such a Fortnite nerd right now. If, if you don't play Fortnite, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Basically, I got grounded. I couldn't play Fortnite anymore. And because of that, I missed, like, the best, most iconic and fun seasons of Fortnite. The biggest obsession, though, that I had, the longest, biggest obsession that affected me the most that I had was probably the gymnastics one. So whenever I was a little kid, and, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but I always want to be the, the center of attention. And so I looked up on my little shitty tablet that I'd look up boobies on YouTube on how to get a six pack in five minutes. I never got the six pack. I still don't have it. And then in the recommended, I saw how to do a backflip in five minutes. And after doing about four or five minute tutorials on how to get a six pack and never getting it, I gave up, went to the backflip. But the difference was with the backflip tutorial is I got close enough to the point where I felt like I was actually doing something, which made me stick to doing it. And I continued to do it. And I did not learn how to do a backflip in five minutes. But after about a year, I did it on a trampoline for the first time. And keep in mind, I'm like seven years old. After I learned how to do it, I really started liking doing flips. I mean, it was so fun. I didn't really care about gymnastics or competing or any of that. I just wanted to learn how to do cool flips on a fucking trample steam. And eventually, for I think my eighth birthday, my parents got me like a membership or whatever at a gymnastics place that was next to where I live. That was fucking sick. And the thing about a lot of gymnastics places is that a lot of them are really strict and a lot of them care a lot about form and competing and so you can't go there and do the type of stuff that I want to do which is just fuck around and learn cool shit because they care too much about oh you have to do it right you have to tuck your toes you have to fucking suck your dick while you're in the air and I didn't want to do any of that but this gym that I went to it was oh my god it was so good they didn't give a fuck dude sometimes I would go there and they would give me like private lessons they would just go all right you can go with this coach and just you know fuck around and then I'd go to a coach and they just be like so what do you want to work on and I'd say oh I want to work on this trick and they just teach they just help me do it which is like those private lessons are like five dollars a minute. And if you go there for an hour, 
I went there Tuesdays and Thursdays for an hour. An hour, which is 60 minutes, six times five. That's like $300 worth of shit that I that they would just do. Then whenever COVID happened, it fucking shut down. And then I got fat and forgot how to do all the tricks. But then whenever I got skinny, I relearned how to backflip on ground. And so now I can, I can still do the backflip and I can do a couple more tricks. But since that gym closed down, you know, like I said, all the other gyms are like all these form fuck gyms. And so I've never found a gym that I like. And I'm never going to find one as cool as that. Dude, all of the coaches there were all just like teenagers who were looking for a job and they would just, they just didn't care. So I'd be able to do whatever the fuck I want. And there was like Olympic grade trampolines and shit that were like bouncy as fuck that I would do shit off of. That was a big obsession for me.